Girl, this video was supposed to be out two weeks ago, but them forces that be, honey, Anyway, what's up beautiful? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Lisa May and this is Thinking Beauty where we dive into all things politics, pop culture, and personal development. Okay, so girl, <laughs> let me just start out by saying, let's just accept the fact that I may miss a Monday here and there. <laughs> I'm still working on getting my systems together like we talked about in my last video. And like I said, I really want for my videos to be divinely inspired. And by the nature of some of the content I create, some of my videos require a little bit more time and dedication. It's really important for me to be intentional and thorough in what I'm putting together for y'all. And because I don't have solid systems in place yet and limited time to actually work on my videos on top of a nine to five, it gets a little difficult sometimes. And honestly, instead of rushing to put out a video, you know, just to make it on time, it's really more important to me to take a little bit more time and focus to put together a solid video. So yeah, just bear with me, girl. Once I get that batching system down pat, I promise we will be more consistent. Okay, so with that out of the way, I am super excited to be back with what I'm calling a personal pop culture development video. And I'm calling it that because it comes from my mentor in my head, Steve Stout, who's a heavyweight in the hip hop industry. If you're not familiar with who he is, head over to my site, thinkingbeauty.com, where I actually wrote a similar piece on him laying out 27 keys I picked up from an interview he did on Rap Radar with Elliot Wilson. So in this video, I'm laying out 19 keys to being success ready that comes from an interview Steve did with um, Earn Your Leisure at his SelectCon 5 conference. These keys are simply personal principles that ultimately lead to professional success. And because I know many of us came into the new year with like those big goals we want to accomplish and we're determined to make 2024 our most successful year yet, I knew I had to cover this interview and encourage myself and you ladies to think about some of the answers to some serious questions Steve posed posed in this interview. Are you ready for the success you want to see this year? Do you understand who you need to become, what you need to do, and the team of people you need around you to maximize the opportunities you have in front of you? How are you preparing yourself to be ready for the success you want to see or the goals you want to achieve? Are you putting yourself in position knowing the ball is about to come your way? Now, one thing I notice about Steve is he is a stickler about taking yourself seriously. <laughs> he has a very low tolerance for people who don't take themselves seriously, regardless of how talented they are. He says, if you aren't taking it seriously, you know, whatever goal you set for yourself or plan you've made or endeavor you've committed to, if you're just kind of doing your thing like nonchalantly and non-committed, people aren't going to take you seriously. So if you want people to take you seriously this year and you want to make sure you're in position when that ball comes your way, where you achieve success, you handle that success and you maintain that success, then keep watching because you know I got you, girl. Okay, so the first principle is to build a solid foundation. Steve says that speed shouldn't be what your foundation is built on. Your foundation should be built on hard work where you're dedicating to your craft and putting in extraordinary effort. It should be built on appreciation for your craft, where you have knowledge of the industry and the contribution that you bring to it. It should be built on smart thinking and good values, which are values that have value. It should be built on tenacity, where you stick to your goals and you stick to them long enough to really see the reward. It should be built on good support systems, which are routines and workflows and teams and people. It should also be built on recognizing and respecting your responsibility. And then most importantly, it should be built on knowing your mission and your why. Why are you doing what you're doing? So really take some time to think about your foundation and make sure you're building a solid foundation. Once you've built that solid foundation, the second principle is to put in extraordinary effort. And this is about pushing yourself to do more than you think you can or know you can. So let's say for example, you're a writer and you know that you can write one chapter a day, then push for two or even one and a half. 
Or if you struggle to complete a chapter a day, push to complete that chapter with ease, where you're basically increasing your work time, not necessarily your workload. The most important thing is don't rest at pumping out one, because if you crave improvement and excellence, don't rest. You wanna incrementally increase. And let me just caution you and say, do this gradually and gracefully. Push yourself, don't force yourself. Because like we talked about in the last video, your willpower is delicate and you don't want to get overwhelmed to the point where you crash and burn. You know, this is definitely something that I'm trying to learn and implement myself because I am so hard on myself and my working spirit really takes a beating. <laughs> But anyway, the point is to incrementally and gradually increase to the point of putting in extraordinary effort. Once you've mastered hard work, push to put in that extraordinary effort. The third principle is to have good infrastructure. And this is basically all about systems, having good systems in place that direct your habits and support your goals and your values. Like it's really as simple as that. When you are building that solid foundation, make sure you're putting good infrastructure in place to support your goals. The fourth principle is to elevate your expectations. And this is about not flirting with the idea of putting in more effort, but making it a standard, a bare minimum. It's about raising the bar on what you expect from yourself across the board as it relates to your goals and your habits and, you know, the things that you consume, whether it's food or media or even conversations and discussions and, you know, the way that you do things. You really want to expect higher for yourself and better for yourself. Elevating your expectations is really about rejecting the status quo. So just something to think about. The fifth principle is to make consistency a habit. And it's really as simple as it sounds. It should be standard that you are consistent. It should be a habit. Whatever you've decided to do, it should be continually done and executed on. It should be on autopilot where it's done without you thinking to do it. You know, you just do it. It's really as simple as that. And honestly, ladies, consistency is truly a non-negotiable. But Another word of caution, <laughs> be realistic when you set your timetable for consistency. And actually I'm going to use this time to say, I am going to adjust my timetable for these videos. So I think instead of, you know, saying that I'm going to post once a week, honestly, I'm probably going to post maybe every two weeks, every three weeks, maybe even once a month. Because one, like I said, by the nature of the content I create, like my videos do require a lot more like, you know, time, focus and dedication. And unfortunately, my lifestyle isn't really set up to where I can commit and dedicate to it like I like I want to, like I really, really want to. Um, so I have to be realistic because like I said, I don't want to just rush to put together like some, you know, excuse my language, but I don't want to rush to put together some half-ass video. Like I really want my videos to really be, you know, a good quality. So yeah, I'm going to say maybe even <laughs> once a month, you know, and then if I can make it like hey, every two weeks or every week, then cool. All right. So the sixth principle is to deliver on your word. And this is about doing what you say you're going to do and having integrity, you know, with yourself and with others. You really want to be true to your intentions and who you are. You know, if you said it, you meant it because you truly believe it and then you do it. And this really allows you to gain trustworthiness with yourself and then with others. So like I said, I want to deliver on my word. So I don't want to tell you that I'm going to post videos every week and I don't, you know, I want to be consistent and I want to deliver on my word. Oh, and this actually plays into another principle, but we'll get to that. The seventh principle is to follow through. And of course, this is everything that we talked about in the last video, but it also includes checking your work, checking back with others, checking back in with yourself. You know, it's really about assessing what has been done and then calculating any improvements. So again, let's use the example of the writer. An example of follow through would be rereading the chapter that you wrote or asking for feedback considering that feedback and making whatever necessary adjustments. And then if you want to elevate your expectations, a person with elevated expectations 
would follow through and thank the person that gave them feedback and show them the improvements that they made. It's really about closing the loop and bringing something from start to finish completely. And this is really important because precision and expertise is gained or birthed through follow through. You know, it's what separates the amateurs from the professionals. So if you want to be a professional this year, then you want to make sure you are following through in every aspect of your life. The eighth principle is to be diligent and strategic in your thinking. You really want to be careful and thorough and detailed in the way that you think and solve problems. Steve says to structure your thoughts and thinking so that you can have rational and strategic thought processes that take you from idea to implementation, to execution, to desired or targeted outcome. It's really about thinking about things in terms of a solution to whatever problem or obstacle or challenge, but you really want your thoughts and your thinking to be structured in a way where you're trying to solve whatever problem it is as creatively as you want. The most important thing is that your approach should just be methodical in whatever it is you know, you're trying to achieve, where basically you know, you're considering the different ways you are considering the different variables. You come up with the best way to do something and then you consider how you'll do that thing that you landed on, you know? So for example, let's say you want to lose weight. So what's the obstacle? The obstacle is, you know, you're carrying an extra 20 pounds and you want to drop 20 pounds. So you consider the variables. Hmm. You realize you don't like the gym. You know, you kind of take a look around your house. You realize you have weights at home. Then you think like, oh, there's workout videos on YouTube and Instagram. So then you say, hmm, I think the best solution here is to create a home routine. Then maybe I can clean up my diet to support me in that goal, you know? And then you could take it a step further and consider how losing weight by like spring or the summer will allow you to wear a bathing suit on the, I'm sorry, a bikini on the beach, you know, which thereby gives you like a targeted goal and it gives you the built-in motivation to achieve that goal. A bad example of diligent and strategic thinking is rushing out to buy an expensive gym membership because you don't like the gym <laughs> but you didn't take time to consider that variable you know you just did there are times to just do it's just not when you're trying to be strategic you want to be precise and intentional you know when you want to be in position for success and maximize your opportunities and abilities you want and need strategy you know you want your thoughts and your thinking to be structured to be diligent and rational so that you can effectively strategize and come up with the best option or the best course of action. You know, Steve says when people ask him about, you know, like some of his creative campaigns or whatever, he says that he can tell you from start to finish how he came to that you know, that ultimate campaign, which was a success. And it's because he has diligent and rational thought processes that, like I said, take him from idea to implementation, to execution, to that desired outcome. So really challenge yourself to be, you know, strategic and diligent in your thinking. I think this is very important. Okay. So the ninth principle is to make the tough decisions in the tough times. Now, there will be times when you have competing interests and you have to decide between them. So like, for example, you know, do you go to brunch with an old friend that you haven't seen in years or do you stay home and work and keep your deadline? Or, you know, do you stay in your hometown with, you know, your friends and your family and like your support system? Or do you move across the country or even across the globe to pursue a dream job? Or do you move away for your dream job or do you stay home and take care of an ailing parent you know times will get tough and you have to be willing to make tough decisions so like another example would be let's say you have a business and you hired your best friend to work your business work in your business but she's failing and failing terribly do you let your business suffer or do you fire your best friend you know these decisions might seem like they're easy enough to make but let's say you know considering the variables you know let's say her husband just left her and she's seven months pregnant and she really needs needs the job. You know, you really have to think about that. And so when you're making these decisions, you really want to make them di diligently. Okay. The 10th principle is to surround yourself with people that can tell you no. It's really important to surround yourself with people 
who can see your blind spots, who love you enough to tell you about them. You know, people who are bold and courageous and honest enough to check you when you need to be checked, you know, when you're getting in your own way. Usually these people are pretty ambitious themselves and they're supportive of what you're doing. So, you know, you definitely don't want naysayers. You want people who have high expectations of you and of themselves, you know, and people who are honest with themselves, people who believe in you and what you're doing. And again, are bold enough and love you enough to check you when necessary and point out things that you may have missed. You know, this is very important. And it goes back to having that good infrastructure. You really wanna have, even on, on a friend level, you wanna have friends that can tell you no. And then even in your business, you wanna have people that can tell you no. It's a reason why you hear people say they don't like yes, people around them or you can tell when someone has yes people around them so really challenge yourself to get some no people <laughs> around you and again not not naysayers but just those people who really believe in you and have high expectations of you and who can see your blind spots and you know let you know about them the 11th principle is to build and protect your reputation we all want people to respect us and really people should speak highly of you because people do business with people that they like. And like, regardless of whether we like it or not, we are all interconnected in some way on some level. And it just really works in your favor when people are fond of you, you know? And make no mistake, I'm not talking about people pleasing. I'm talking about having impeccable character because at minimum, when you have impeccable character, people respect you and they don't mind being around you and they don't mind working with you. Even more, they don't mind referring their friends or loved ones to you or your business. I truly feel like the worst thing is losing out on the opportunity because someone didn't wanna work with you because you have a, a poor or bad reputation, especially if it's because you didn't take time to be mindful of your behavior and your code of conduct, you know? Really, in a nutshell, reputation gets you what hard work and effort can't. So build it and protect it. Okay, the 12th principle is to fit the part. Okay, so, you know, this is really important because it's about being congruent with your goals. The most easiest example to go to is, you know, when it comes to like dressing, like dressing the part, like dressing for the job that you want, you know? So if you want to be an executive, you might want to forego sweats every day, <laughs> you know? And I guess I'm definitely talking to myself because honey, there's nothing I love more than lounging around the house in a comfy pair of sweats, <laughs> you know? Now, I don't know that I necessarily want to be an executive per se, but you know, it might be nice to when I'm lounging around the house, lounge around in something other than sweats, especially if I'm going out in public. But this is important because you want to be comfortable in the situations and the encounters that come with your goals, you know, the things that you want. So for example, you want to be a famous singer or even like a celebrity or even an influencer. You want to be comfortable meeting people, or let's say you want to be a leader. You want to be comfortable delegating and directing people, or let's say you want to be a pastor. You should be comfortable praying for people. You have to fit the part that comes with what you want to do. You have to be the person that does. The 13th principle is to be a strong communicator. Uh, this is definitely a favorite one of mine, definitely something that I'm focused on and committed to, but you really want to be able to express yourself clearly and confidently. You want to say what you mean, and you really want to be able to get your ideas and your points across. Steve says to do this as respectfully as you can, because again, you want to be respected yourself. Going back to reputation, you want to have a reputation of being respectful and honest and clear. So it's really important to take time and spend time mastering the art of communication. Another uh, part of communication that often gets overlooked is listening. You really want to listen and actively listen where you ask questions where you consider what you are hearing and then you respond appropriately. Respond to what you heard and what it means, not with what you wanted to say before you heard what you heard. You know, you can always veggie back to a point, okay? Shout out to 19 Keys for that veggie back because you know, we don't do piggybacks over here. <laughs> but the most important thing is to respond to what you heard. So you really wanna make sure you are improving your communication 
because as offensive as it sounds sometimes you really want to be able to articulate your thoughts and your ideas especially if you want people to take you seriously the 14th principle is to practice the thinnest slice strategy if and when it applies this basically comes from malcolm gladwell's book blink which i actually read um, a few years ago when i was in new york and i actually think it might be worth rereading do i have it here yes oh actually yes it comes from this book here blink which is a really good book the book basically talks about how to make snap decisions about how you can come to the same conclusion as you would if you would have taken like extensive time to consider everything it talks about how to hone in on important details and analyze it quickly and accurately rashad of earn your leisure he counts this as one something that allows him to be success ready and protect his and his brand reputation and something that he learned and adopted from Steve Stout. So I definitely think it's worth taking time to look into and, you know, trying out to see if and how, you know, it works for you and your goals and your work. Okay. The fifth principle is don't cross the line of vulgarity. <laughs> and this ties back to protecting your reputation and elevating your expectations. And, you know, Steve mentioned it in the context of like being honest and saying what you mean and standing on what you mean while being respectful, making your point. I take it a little further to mean not being vulgar or unsophisticated in your work and your behavior. So like, for example, going out to a public place and you have a t-shirt that says F white people or F the police or WAP you know written out another example is let's say you know you're going to meet your boyfriend's parents in your club clothes or your wrinkled worn clothes you really want to be sophisticated and discerning in your behaviors and in your endeavors so like let's use a professional example you put together this clean presentation you know don't put a big ugly graphic on it or like use big ugly font. You really want to be refined in what you're doing. Another example is going to a nice restaurant and then like you're talking loud, you're laughing loud, you're reeking of weed, you know, you're making crass jokes and you know, to the servers and the bartenders, like don't do that because you know, if you do these kinds of things in one area, you'll do them in other or all areas. And depending on who sees you, people won't want to work with you. And sometimes it's not as immediate, like, you know, you have the opportunity right there, but let's say someone sees you and then it's like, that's what they remember you for. So that could potentially put a bad taste in their mouth. And I'm like, yeah, no, I don't think I really want to work with her, you know? So don't do that. Don't cross the line of vulgarity. Be discerning and be refined and be sophisticated. The 16th principle is to know when to pivot. Girl, this is so important because you will always have to pivot at some point and probably often. And pivoting doesn't mean abandoning your goals or like your efforts or your endeavor. If you think about it in terms of basketball, pivoting is lifting one foot and then moving into another position to either pass the ball or to make a shot while still keeping that one foot planted in place. And it truly is an art. And unfortunately, most people think it means, you know, getting out of position. When and it really means covering more ground to potentially go in a different direction. And so, I mean, I can give you an example, like current example, I'm sorry, current situation, present example of pivoting is me pivoting on that deadline. Yeah, this video was supposed to be out, what, a week ago, two weeks ago, but I'm having to pivot and to increase my timetable and push my videos back. So instead of putting out videos once a week, I'm gonna have to pivot to put them out once every two weeks or once a month, you know, like I'm not abandoning the goal of creating videos. I'm just pivoting. I'm covering more ground. Another example of pivoting is let's say you decide that you want to start a business. And so you decide that you want to, you know, sell jewelry that you make. And so you go do door to door trying to sell your jewelry and no one is buying. Like nobody's answering the door. Nobody wants to hear it. Pivoting is deciding like, you know what? I think I, instead of going door to door, maybe I'll, you know, create like an online boutique. Or let's say 
you know, you create that online boutique, but you're not seeing the sales that you want to see. Pivoting is incorporating clothing items to your brand so that when women come to your site to buy clothes, they're also buying your jewelry to go with their outfits. You know, the most important thing is to stay planted in your goal. You know, you just change the direction of your gaze to pivot masterfully. You have to be dedicated and committed and curious enough to explore more and consider more options. The 17th principle is to know your responsibility. And this is basically knowing the weight that comes along with your goal or your endeavor, like the weight that you carry. It's about knowing what your contribution is, what is expected of you and what that means, and then embracing and committing to that. It's just like the old saying, to whom much is given, much is required. So you really want to recognize what you have been given and recognize what is required of you and then meet that requirement. And then going back to elevated expectations, you want to exceed that requirement. Okay. Okay. All right. The 18th principle is to report to the mirror girl. This is my favorite one. And this comes from Steve talking about Nas. You know, he says that people come up to him and they're surprised that like, you know, Nas is on this run that he's on where he's like creating all of this music. But he says that Nas is free to create what he wants, when he wants and how he wants, because he has no one to report to except himself in the mirror. And of course, this immediately hit me and I took it to mean hold yourself accountable regarding everything, you know, your goals and the way that you carry them out yourself and the way that you conduct yourself in your work. You have to come to the point of holding yourself accountable. Now, I know like accountability partners and accountability groups are like a big thing and they're great. I have like I have. I have them currently and I've had my fair share along the way. They're great and they're necessary, but at some point you have to come to the point of holding yourself accountable. And it goes back to delivering on your word. You know, you really have to deliver on your word to yourself. Your word should have the greatest impact and authority on you after God, of course. But you know, you really want to make it a habit to report to the mirror, to hold yourself accountable. And like, if you struggle with this, you know, I would say try repeating affirmations to yourself in the mirror. I put in work. I do what I say I'm going to do. I'm good at holding myself accountable, like whatever. You just really want to recognize the value of holding yourself accountable. So yes, ladies, be like Mr. Nas Escobar and report to that book. Mirror, okay? <laughs> All right. The 19th and final principle is to commit to the long haul because ladies, nothing great, important, or of significant value happens overnight. It takes intentional and dedicated time, focus, and effort. So you have to be willing to commit to the long haul. And this means being patient, intentional, and determined and persistent. Going back to that basketball example, it requires you to keep your eye on the ball, no matter how long it takes for that ball to come your way. Even if it doesn't come to you the whole game, you have to know, okay, there's another game, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And there's another game and you just keep at it. And this is really, really important. Like you really want to give yourself time and space to develop. It's like the saying, what is the saying? Um, it's not about the destination. It's about the journey. You really want to appreciate the journey over the destination. You should love the journey, you know, like the time that you're spending building and working because you will, and you should, be there a while because this allows you to mature, to grow, to refine, and to ultimately build credibility with yourself and in the field of your endeavor. And going back to reputation, that's when your reputation precedes you like it does Steve Stout. And then people will know you are a person of excellence. So yes, beautiful, that is it. That is 19 keys from my mentor, Steve Stout, to make sure that you are success ready, to make sure that you are positioning yourself for when that ball comes your way. Because girl, it's coming. <laughs> the ball is coming your way, okay? Just make sure that you are ready 
when that ball comes your way that you were able to achieve, not only achieve that success, but you were able to handle that success and maintain that success because you really don't want to get success and then you crumble under the weight of it. Because at that point, it's like, what was the point of it? You know, you want to be able to gracefully handle that success, especially if you ultimately you know what I'm saying? I want to get to the level of Steve Stout, you know? So yes, beautiful. Those are some principles that you can kind of keep in mind to guide you along your way this year. I guess I should say drop down in the comments and, you know, let me know which principle, you know, you're going to commit to, um, which one stood out to you, what you feel like you're good at or what you think you might need to, to adopt. Let's continue the conversation down in the comments. Let me know which ones are resonating with you. Um, or even which ones you disagree with. Yes, until next time. And like I said, it might be Monday or it might be, you know what I'm saying, two or three Mondays after that. But our next video is going to be a politics video. I'm going to be reviewing uh, Liz Cheney's book, Oath and Honor, a, mem a memoir and a warning. Yeah, until next time, Lisa May here saying peace, love, and blessings.